What will it take to make Haiti a stronger and better country? Joining me now again from Port-au-Prince, Angelina Jolie, who is also the UNHCR's goodwill ambassador. Angelina, you just heard President Clinton talk about going beyond the immediate emergency and, and really trying to make this a serious long-term project. How can that happen? I mean, look, you're in the entertainment and media business. You know very well that a lot of Americans have very short-term um, short term look at things like this beyond the beyond the disaster what do you think about getting this place out of its poverty trap well I think I think one you know it is our responsibility both of ours to try to continue to do stories I know you will but that is part of it I think sometimes I often wonder if the media can handle more than one conflict at a time I think the American people can I think the more we continue to give them information and remind them that it's important. They, they are a very feeling people, they're very understanding people, and it's not their lack of interest, it's our lack of explaining why it's important sometimes. Look, whenever people talk about, and we try, we try to put the spotlight on, I do in my reports, you do, you're a big star, you're down there, presumably for a reason, to try to bring real light to this. How do you get leadership then to turn this into something other than a temporary focus and a temporary spotlight because it's going to need a lot more than a band-aid well, no absolutely and I hope from what I've learned you know the, the thing that that's spoken about often is these eight unsuccessful attempts at intervening over the years we have tried many many times and we have failed and we have to understand why and we have to work really closely with this government I think that's key and that we can't just come and help them. We have to help them help themselves really in, in, in the biggest way, really help them build their civil society, really help them build their registrations, their schools, everything, and teach them how to continue to do it. So, so it's them that pulls this country through in the end, and we must listen to them. You went to the uh, MSF, the Médecins Sans Frontières tent. You spoke to a little boy there. I heard you ask him about how did he support himself on the streets. Obviously, everybody here has a, a lot of hardship, certainly after the earthquake and even before the earthquake. But again, I want to focus on what you can do because you have a huge amount of power at your fingertips because of who you are. And there's been, you know, metric ton loads of dignitaries and celebrities and all sorts of people who've dropped into Haiti. And yet, the question is, obviously you have the ability to sway people's, um, to, to, to sway people. And could you come back, and do you plan to come back to the United States and talk, where, whether it be in, I don't know, schools or in communities or in, on, in, on Capitol Hill, somewhere, about what you're talking about right now and about what you've seen? So well, absolutely. I mean, I, you know, we're always shy about our own voice. Um, so I certainly get that way, but I, but I do feel... I feel passionate about Haiti and, I, and, and the place and the people and, I, and I'll continue to come back and I'll continue to express what I'm learning. I'm, I've been spending the last few days really just trying to gain information and put the pieces together myself and learn about best practices and when I think I know what they are, I have a good sense of them, I'll certainly express them as strongly as I can to the people I'm in contact with, whether it be in the government, in our government at home or, or in, uh, in the UN and uh, you know, whoever I can speak to. What are you seeing in terms of the health issues right now? When we were there, obviously it was the immediate, it was amputations, it was uh, fevers, it was a need for antibiotics. What are you seeing in terms of diseases that may be cropping up or getting worse? I haven't seen uh, the diseases, but I haven't been everywhere. And I know there's a big uh, TB clinic that's, that has a lot of people very concerned. TB is a big concern. It's airborne, as you know. A lot of people are crammed together. People are concerned about cholera. There's, there's pretty much everything to be concerned about in this kind of a situation, especially with the sanitation issues and uh, uh, the floods coming. So, um, but at MSF, I thought something that was extraordinary to me is not only the spirit of the people, because it, you see little kids that have lost their legs, and you ask them if they're all right, and they, they say, ça va, and they're okay, and, and somehow they're able to smile, I think. It says, uh, says a lot about them, but the reality of these children, especially with amputations, and there are thousands and thousands of them, uh, there were many saved by great doctors like MSF, in limbs saved, but there were many that had to be removed, and, and as you know, with children, as their bones grow, they have to continue to shave the bone, they have to continue to get new, a new prosthesis, they have to continue to learn how to function, they will have difficulty working, they will be different in society. This is a, this is a big long-term concern that... Um, that also has to be addressed. So, 
So every time you turn a corner here, you're reminded of yet another you know, quite yeah. complex problem to deal with. Haiti has an amazing history. You were just saying, you know, you're, you're wrapping your head around so many of the complexities of, of the issue. The first black, black republic, the first uh, real independent black republic before even the United States. As you know, it was occupied by the U.S. and there have been just years and years of damage by politics as well. Now, today, You've heard all the promises from the UN, you've heard them from President Clinton, you've heard all sorts of international financial organizations talking about a Marshall Plan and rebuilding, a lot of serious commentary. Do you think the US has a moral duty to do something that lasts in Haiti now? Well, I think we have a moral duty to do what we can for any country that's, that's suffering um, in any way. You know, I'm, I'm that. Uh, but, but yes, yeah, specifically Haiti, um, as our neighbor and with our with our deeply rooted history together, um, absolutely. I think we have a, a a very big obligation to this place, and and I think in the end it also benefits us. I think they're, they're a wonderful neighbor to have, and 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 they are they're an extraordinary people. So I think the positive side, if 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 we can really do our do our good work and really make a big difference in this country, finally. I think in the end, this will be a country hopefully we can, we can work with, trade with, visit, and uh, you know, do many positive things. It's, uh, certainly a lot of people are hoping that, not least the Haitians. Can I ask you finally, what has moved you the most in your visit there just now? Uh, there's not, well, th there's, there's so much you get overwhelmed in these situations. I suppose the boy that was on the street, I think it's a reminder of of, he is such an example of these people that live here and, and children around the world. He's been on his own for so long. He's been a street child for so long. He suffers so much. You know, he didn't even have family when he, when he had to go to the hospital and, break, and, and broke his leg. Um, and when he's, when he's released from the hospital, he has nowhere to go. He has no one to take care of him. And he's going to have a very complicated future because for as much as we work towards solutions for these children, it's going to take us a very, very long time and we're not going to be able to help everybody as quickly as we should. So you, you see children like that and you wonder where they're going to be in a year. And it's, and it's, it's very hard to, um, to hear him talk and to not be able to do something immediately. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And I can see that his story has moved you. And you spoke about using your voice. And I hope that you continue to use your very powerful voice. Uh, mobilizing the kind of uh, concerns and, and action that Haiti so desperately needs. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much. Thank you.